In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the 2004 Subaru Forester 2.5 XS. So this is another loaner review. Um, I've been lent this car to use while I'm in Tasmania and um, I have been. I've got mud on it. Um, that was actually for some road repairs. I haven't been off-roading in it. It just looks like it has and now has a funky free tone look to it. Please ignore the cockatoos. They are blooming noisy um, things. Um, but yeah, Subaru Forester, it was um, kind of a crossover before crossovers were that much of a thing. Uh, it came in in about 98, I think, the Forester. This is a second generation one. It has some... Um, very obvious Tasmanian accessories um, or Australian generally. We've got a very sturdy um, rhubarb on the front um, for fending off um, wildlife, some of which can be quite large, wombats and the like. We've also got lots of accessory um, covers for the lights, the leading edge of the bonnet, just to reduce stone chips because um, they can be a big problem here. Uh, so that the accessory box has been well ticked. We have some funky alloys, which might be part of the excess specification. Um, I don't really know. But um, I think these are based on the Legacy or Impreza platform. Um, it's a common running gear to both. So we've got a flat four engine at the front. We've got permanent four wheel drive. I believe two wheel drive may have been available in some markets, but um, not European or um, Australian, I don't think. Uh, it has the more boring rear lights, um, looks very similar to a Suzuki Liana estate, which is a bit unfortunate for Subaru there. Um, the early ones had big um, free colour lamps that I liked very much. These just aren't quite so attractive. Excuse my um, uh, sandals, which make the occasional um, rather trumpy sort of a noise. Uh, tow bar, um, as you might expect, but you know, large rear windows, large windows in general. It is... Um, jacked up a bit so there is um, extra height as well as um, a fair bit of ground clearance. Uh, I personally didn't quite understand what the Forester was all about. Uh, it's a bit too low to be your, um, a, an SUV in the traditional sense. So um, what is the point of it? On the other hand it is practical. It has a large boot, it has that high roof. You can wear quite a big hat if you so wish. Um, not something I'm fussed about myself, but there you go. Let's have a peek under the um, bonnet because first of all we can do frameless windows or frameless doors even. Uh, in fact, let's let's go let's go mad and do, drop the window for maximum effect. Oh, don't you love that? I love that. There are serious downsides though, which we'll get to, and. Um, yeah, that, that doesn't look great there. That might be one of my issues, which we'll get to on the test drive. Subaru all-wheel drive. Uh, turn that off now. Oh, just love it. Um, somewhere under here will be a catch, no doubt. I almost had it. There we go. And there is the engine, the um, 2.5 litre um, boxer four-cylinder engine. So like a Volkswagen Beetle which is why quite a lot of these engines do end up in Beetles and buses. Um, so it's quite a short power unit. Um, that is kind of it. Uh, gearbox sits behind. And yeah, Subaru, huge fans of um, flat four engines. Uh, they do make a distinctive noise, albeit quite muted when there's not um, a turbo because they use different headers. That's what exaggerates the offbeat nature of a flat four engine is the um, unequal headers on a turbo. Um, but it's fairly easy to work on, but I, I, I'm guessing on this one, it has a single cam um, per bank, so each side, and I think the cam covers are doing the usual trick of leaking slightly onto the exhaust. There's a mild um, burning smell from time to time. Uh, got a chassis plate there with um, Fuji Heavy Industries, the company that owns the Subaru name. And there we go, Tokyo, Japan, Climatizer. But um, yeah, I mean, they're sort of easy to work on unless you need to start getting the heads off and then it becomes problematic. Moving inside, um, the doors open nice and large to give plenty of space for getting in. Uh, this one has another Australian um, common modification, which is this um, dash topper. Um, it sort of 
keeps the interior a little cooler, but also stops the plastics getting damaged by the heat, which can happen. Under here, there is hidden a little flap, which contains one coin. There's a little digital clock hidden under here, hazard lights. nice little click uh, we've got um, digital air conditioning um, I say digital there are no digits um, well I haven't quite worked out if it's full climate control or not you can certainly set the temperature but you manually have to turn the air con on so it might not be a fully fledged um, system it has oh a springy little cup holder that's quite funky and uh, this big screen which is uh, again quite um, of its time hello quite reflective also it's a looking a little retro now. Um, so instead of your usual stuff, you just get this. Apparently it has DVD. Um, let's just turn that off for a moment. There we go. And a little additional temperature gauge here. I think that's wrong. I don't think it's 26 degrees currently. Um, move over to the main uh, display. We've got the um, fuel and temperature over here. Um, it's all very simple, all, all very effective and kind of in your face. What isn't simple is the wiper stalk. Check out that for a load of um, different things. We've got a variable intermittent. We've got the rear wiper control on here. The front wiper control obviously will give that a test um, momentarily. The washers are actually by this little button on the end. Um, the indicator stalk is also fairly busy. We've got lights, as you might expect. What does a light on warning sound like? There isn't one. Or maybe it's because I've got the ignition on. No? Ah! Oh, it's because it's a Subaru, so the lights won't be on at the moment. That's what this button is for. That's what puts your parking lights on. So um, that's what that's about. And we've got... Um, uh, you can adjust the brightness of the, the dials there. Otherwise, it's kind of pretty much as you'd expect. Uh, we've got a little cruise control stalk down here as well, which manages to be um, never quite in the right place. A full selection of blanking switches. Uh, we've got front fogs, but no rear fogs because they're not required in this market. Um, down here, somewhere to rest your sandal and um, free pedals laid out much as you'd expect. There's a remote fuel flap release. There doesn't seem to be a remote boot release in here. Um, over on the door, full bank of um, switches for mirrors and windows, all fairly sort of standard stuff. Uh, down in the center, oh, look at me, I managed to get dust all over myself. Um, little um, gear lever, quite notchy in typical Subaru fashion. Feels like every Subaru I've ever driven. Um, also has the dual range, so you can um, go into a low range, uh, and that's high range. Uh, the four-wheel drive system doesn't employ any diff locks. Um, it is just open diffs all around, um, so limits to how useful it can be. There's a little cubby there, handbrake, glove box, um, quite full in this case. Um, we've even got the service history and everything in the door. And power less is more um, on this um, Hubnut hoodie. Um, don't forget, you can always head to the Hubnut store to buy goodies such as this. Although I think we're out of that hoodie style. We still have t-shirts. And this is fitting because we're not in a turbo. They did do turbos of these models, um, but this is just the mere um, 173 brake horsepower version. Little, little armrests, should you need them. Haven't felt the need myself yet. I think I've entirely forgot they were there. But very, very comfortable seats, quite shapely. These have got covers on as well, just to protect them a bit better. They're quite firm, but fair, I would say. One thing I entirely forgot to mention in the front is the headroom. I mean, it, here in the back as well, it's quite substantial. There is um, an awful lot of it. And, um, you know, I'm about five foot nine, so um, no worries at all. Um, head restraints in the back as well. I think they're adjustable. And um, yeah, it gives you a fairly good view of the road ahead because the windows are quite big. They're quite heavily tinted, but um, yeah, all round visibility is pretty good, I reckon. So um, yeah, that rates us pretty good. Meanwhile, the boot can be opened thusly. We've got a load cover in place at the moment. This is a little fiddly to use, but away it goes. And uh, we've got um, an accessory tray in the back as well, um, just to protect the um, boot carpet underneath. Well, that makes getting at the spare wheel a bit di difficult because all that has got to come out. Uh, we've even got a fire extinguisher to hand and a big bag of um, tools, I'm assuming, and a picnic bag 
Oh, maybe I'll have a picnic later on, who knows? Um, but obviously the seats fold 60-40 split to enlarge the area. And you've got great height. It's a good, practical, big shape. It's not a sports tourer sort of nonsense estate. It is actually estate shaped. Uh, there we go. That's back in. Brilliant. Right. You are all um, set up in the head cam, so um, we shall go for a drive. Um, get a shift on because the kookaburra is laughing at me, which I think is most unfair. Um, so um, we'll do the window up. And we'll pull away. There we go, we're having to use the wipers because it has started drizzling. We will note a slight triangle of doom up here, a small one. Uh, that's mildly disappointing, I must admit. But um, yeah, she's certainly not a sluggish car, even if I find myself slightly waiting for that kick of um, turbo that I associate with that engine noise. Uh, but it's, it's quite a heavy car, so I don't think... Um, it's um, really geared up for performance. I think the gearing is quite tall, but of course I can drop the gearing, which I'm gonna do at this junction. Um, I'm gonna to come to a stop and then I'm gonna select low range. And uh, the low range um, makes the gearing lower. So here we go. As you can see, it doesn't actually make the gearing all that much lower. So um, we're now doing um, 3,000 revs, an indicated 100. If I drop it back down into high, and accelerate back up to 100 again, uh, you can see um, we've knocked about 500 RPM off. So it's not a drastic drop in gearing, but it is surprisingly useful. Um, if you're towing and manoeuvring slowly, you can lower first and reverse, so you can go down much more slowly without having to slip the clutch. It's useful in traffic jams. That's where I personally have used it quite a lot uh, on previous Subarus I've owned. But you may also be noticing we're starting to get quite a lot of um, wind noise going on now. And that is a downside of those frameless doors. I think the seals suffer here because of how, um, just check the traction, there you go, floor it mid-bend in the wet, just picks up. Um, yeah, I think the seals suffer in the heat here in Australia, it means you get frankly unacceptable levels of wind noise, which is a shame because um, there's a bit of road noise because noisy um, surface, but um, it'd be fairly peaceful otherwise, but the wind noise really is quite annoying. Uh, the wipers, even though we've got that triangle of doom, as you can see, they are enormous. And uh, they wipe an awful lot of windscreen. So uh, that's good. I would love to say it's quite a muscular engine, been a 2.5 litre four banger. You'd expect it to um, have a fairly decent shove of grunt, but the truth is it doesn't. Um, there are some very steep motorway inclines around here, but I'm still having to find myself dropped down to fourth, uh, which is, um, upsetting frankly the steering is very dead indeed it um, really doesn't inspire confidence um, kind of like driving along in a computer game for um, all the feel that comes back through it uh, that, in fact, I think I've driven computer games where there's more feedback the ride is fine on roads like this but if you go over quite badly broken roads and Australia does have them in places it becomes distinctly uncomfortable and uh, I don't like that very much at all. It just doesn't ride with any grace. So it's ended up being um, perfect conditions for testing a four-wheel drive uh, because as I frequently say, four-wheel drive doesn't give you more grip. A tyre can only grip the road as well as it can grip the road. Uh, what four-wheel drive does for you is traction. So um, wet roundabouts, wet junctions, you can floor it away 
and uh, have good confidence that it's just going to pick up and go. Uh, here are some American designs of truck built here in Australia. Just reminding me I'm not in Wales because otherwise the weather could quite convincingly make me think I was there. It's a decent car. The um, cruise control is perhaps a little dim-witted. Um, I will set that now. And uh, I have found it's not very good at keeping a consistent speed. Uh, gets caught out going downhill and uphill, just seems a little bit slow to react. So you have to keep an eye on your speed um, because it might accidentally take you too quickly through a speed camera if you're not careful. But yeah, I'd say this is a decent car, slightly ruined by the wind noise. So let's test that, that traction. That's what four wheel drive does for you. You can even do um, tight turns pulling away and you just get traction. So that's all of the good times. It is an engine that's quite willing to rev, which is good because sadly you do have to kind of extend it if you want to get anywhere in a hurry. I will also say around town there's a lot of drivetrain shunt and um, it can be a bit difficult to make smooth, slow progress, which is where this um, dual range comes in all the better because at least you can drop the gearing down um, to try and make life a little easier. It's kind of like Mitsubishi's super shift uh, on the Mitsubishi Colt. Um, it's just, um, yeah, I don't really understand why they didn't make the low ratio lower. Uh, maybe there's physical space issues there. Because if you're going to go to the trouble of fitting these drop down gears, you'd have thought it would be more useful to have them a bit lower. Uh, maybe that's just me. Oh, it really is getting wet now. So there we go. That was the Subaru Forester. Um, they're very popular here, and I guess they're popular because they are such a practical shape. Um, a nice boxy, um, actual usable design. They're, they're very hardy. They've got four-wheel drive. And um, in many ways, they're more of a proper um, sort of 4 by 4 vehicle than most SUVs, which are often only two-wheel drive and rather silly shapes. Um, so yeah, very practical, very spacious, and um, yeah, good fun to drive if a little dead in the steering department. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget you can go to the Hubnut store and um, you can check out support options and buy lovely merchandise. And I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Farewell. By heck, that's an unexpected spot. Volvo 262 Coupe, styled by Bertoni, believe it or not. Um, clearly not one of his better phases. That's um, astonishing. <laughs>